Okay, Kim, with running some diagnostics here, today my internet seems a little bit bad. You cannot blame me, I'm in my hometown, but I'm just glad that I have internet. So I'll just run a few more diagnostics and it looks like, looks like we can start after all. Let's see, all right, it, mm, all right, let's begin. Hey, hello everybody and welcome back to another session of the Market Outlook series with me, Kavita Agrawal. I'm a SEBI registered research analyst and every Friday I bring to you the Market Outlook. We will talk about the chart of Nifty, Bank Nifty and the intersector chart analysis. Now today my internet is less than perfect thanks to Airtel. Um, if you experience delays, don't worry, I will be uploading the session recording right after I'm done. It might take a little bit time and I promise that recorded video upload on my YouTube channel will be much higher quality than what you're going to experience in this live stream. So without much delay, let's get started with today's session. So on the screen, you're now seeing the Nifty chart. Let's take a look at the three minute time frame and see what the market has done this week and what that tells us about the forward looking analysis. So this week we saw that uh, Nifty has given some sort of upside. Okay, it is not a very good upside, but it is some kind of upside. Usually this kind of movement, little bit of an upside that is experienced after a very big decline is not to be trusted. You can see on the charts, I have two marked zones. One is around the level of 18,800 and above is around the level of 19,200. Now in my telegram channel, I've been telling people that on the upside 19,200 acts as a very important resistance. We can see today that this zone has this green zone that's marked on the chart has indeed act, acted as a very important resistance because today, even though the market opened with a pretty big gap up right it was it opened around 100 points up it did not really continue that momentum throughout the day we experienced a lot of sideways activity which was not very promising now if we look at the 15 minute time frame you'll see there is a lot of aggressive drawings done on the rsi the reason of this aggressive drawing is that i can see when the market declined the previous time it broke the level of 30 on a very sustainable manner in the 15 minute time frame this is the indication that a new bottom can be expected you don't have to go very far away to get an example of this if you simply look at the way the price behaved when the last time the level of 30 was breached you can see that the price was here when the level of 30 was breached we could see some support coming in from the blue line which is the 200 ema of the 75 minute time frame yet the prices went lower and forged a new low approximately this low was around 300 points lower than the previous forged low and then we saw that the rsi stabilized above the level of 30 what RSI does is, as we all might know, it compares the speed of change of price, that is the momentum with itself in the time gone by. So the fact that RSI is above the level of 30 here simply indicates that the speed with which the price declined in the second point was slower than in the first point, right? Now, here again, we saw that the decline happened really fast and the prices went up. Now, what we can see is that when the prices on Nifty were very bullish, the highs that were getting formed were around the level of 75 and plus. Right now, the high that we've seen, even though the price might not have completed going up, so it's a little early to say, but in the previous peak that was forged around here, we can see that the price took resistance at the level of 60 right here again before continuing this correction the price did take a correction uh, resistance at the level of 60 on the the rsi took a uh, correction or uh, resistance at the level of 60 before the price continued to decline okay now 
taking a look at the 75 minute time frame so the 15 minute time frame in general is telling us that you know there is a not there is not a lot of strength now looking only at the prices on the 75 minute time frame we can see there is a lot of volatility why because there is a lot of gap formation there is a lot of you know this candle was a was not a very good candle whenever the market opens at high and then continues to decline lower that is not a good indication for the overall market what we can see here is that there is the gray line passing over in the 75 minute time frame which is basically the 70 which is basically the 500 EMA on the 75 minute time frame. Now the 500 EMA is a very important resistance and support zone depending on which direction the price approaches it from. So what I can see here is that the 500 EMA is acting as a very important resistance here. My target on Nifty for this correction which is ongoing right now is 18,600. You can see that when the price started falling from the level of 20,100, it went down to touch the level of 19,300. From there, it also gave an upside move of around 500 points nearly in a matter of one month, but then it continued to decline further. So far, we've only covered around 400 points. So we might experience maybe few more points of upside, but my resistance of 19,200-300 remains strong. On the downside, I am expecting this blue line, which is basically the 200 EMA of the daily time frame, to get breached and the level of 18,600 to act as an important support. This was about the price action on the 75 minute time frame. If you look at the RSI of the 75 minute time frame with no regard to the price, the mere fact that the level of 30 was breached in the previous dip is it tells us that the speed with which the price has been declining is not good. Also, there have been series of negative divergences, which again show that the price with which the price the speed with which the price turns lower is a lot higher than the speed with which the price turns to go higher. Okay, the speed with which the price turns lower is much higher than the speed with which the price turns higher. This in general is a very characteristic feature of a bearish market. So we can expect a little bit more downside in the market for sure. That being said, right now there is a lot of stocks with a lot giving a lot of a sense of abundance of opportunities in the market okay to some extent that is also true but remember while the stock market is full of opportunities everywhere you are not in the market for any opportunity you are in the market for good opportunities so don't be in a rush to allocate your capital my members of the trade together program have been messaging me all day long today that ma'am the market is in recovery maybe you should buy start buying stocks my answer to them is right now that no this is too early we need to wait for the market to give us a little bit more confirmation this conviction is coming from the analysis done on the 15 minute time frame and the 75 minute time frame that i have just shown you because both of those time frames are indicating that the bearish momentum is still intact this little bounce that we are seeing it looks more like a bearish market bounce back rather than the resumption of a bullish trend so don't be impatient on the daily time frame we can see this blue line this light blue line which is the 20 ema giving uh being approached so 20 ema and 100 ema on the daily time frame are both going to act as an important resistance on the price of nifty that is the broad market index okay Another thing that is very worthy, worth that's very worth noting on this daily time frame is the volume. You can see that this volume histogram, which is basically I use the MACD to analyze volumes, and I think it gives a lot better results. What I can see is that the volume has been increasing since the price started declining. This is another very characteristic feature of a declining market. Now, if you see here the volume in Nifty was increasing only up to 4th September. The price hike that we saw from 5th September, not the price hike, sorry, the price rally that we saw from 5th September all the way up to say the 18th of September experience was experienced on a declining volume. This was an early indication that we are losing strength. The 
rally is losing strength here you can see that when the rally was still strong the volume was still getting stronger and stronger when the price was increasing but the last leg of upside that we saw we saw the volume declining there that is a telltale sign of a bearish market resumption and this what we are seeing increasing volume when the price is declining is a telltale sign of a continuation of trend so this is the analysis on nifty basically 19200 19300 continues to be very important resistance and on the downside 18800 will act as a support but the target on nifty for this decline is 18600 personally now let's move on to the chart of bank nifty and see what we have to analyze there we'll start again with the 3 minute time frame on the 3 minute time frame again i can see that the Okay, three minute time frame. See, the three minute time frame usually only serves a good purpose if you want to do present day analysis. It doesn't go beyond one to two days um, analysis usually. Um, all right, just hold on. Looks like my members in Telegram are not able to see it. So I'll just share the link of the session please watch the session on et for now if you want to join my telegram channel you can simply look me up type trade with kavita in telegram and you'll be able to join it i'm also pasting the link in the comments for you to easily find the channel i share a lot of informational um I share a lot of knowledge as you can see I like to share uh, what I'm observing on charts my analysis methodologies uh, some question answers you know because I get a lot of repetitive questions from members so I like to give answers on those days I post mark daily market commentary uh, to help people make the right uh, assessment of the market and so on okay so if you are interested in connecting with me joining my telegram channel is a great way to do that um okay now talking about bank nifty let's move on to the 15 minute time frame on this 15 minute time frame again what i can see that there was a bearish indication and we've pretty much reached the resistance on the rsi also i am not seeing any significant reason to believe that you know we will continue on the upside so 15 minute time frame looks weak to me again here what i can see is that there was a volume pickup somewhere here that is up to this point okay this is the point where we experienced the volume pickup you can see this point coincides with the decline okay the volume pickup pretty much stopped when the price started going up and this vol this price upside has happened against declining volume right it's very very evident on the chart if you're doing the observations properly so again on the chart of bank nifty also the common theme prevails that this upside does not have the strength so what do we do we don't make fresh positions whatever little positions you have maintain stop losses on that it's happened after a long time that I am sitting on 70% cash and that is because I am a long side only trader and I only trade in cash segment, right? My objective in the market is very simple. I'm not here to make money. I'm here to make consistent money, which means if I want to be profitable consistently, I have to make sure that I have strong control on my uh, losses. I made a video yesterday explaining this same concept and the video has been uploaded on my website exp-invest.in slash ttp if you're interested in understanding the mindset that you need to have in order to uh, do right kind of trading be sure to go and check out that video on my website it's not on my youtube it's on my website okay exp-invest.in slash ttp all right um bank nifty 15 minute chart is weak 75 minute time frame is also not looking strong because we got an indication of a bearish range shift uh, in this decline and another price correction can be experienced here what should be our downside target on bank nifty do you see this big marked this big green zone i think bank nifty should 
come down to retest this there is also a uh, trend line passing through that zone so i am seeing around four to five percent weakness in the next few days in the bank nifty as well so forty one thousand four hundred is where i would think my target to be with this let's move on to the intersector chart analysis of the market before that i also want us to take a look at the wix charts so in the wix chart i do a side by side analysis of lot of things uh for instance um okay for instance the nifty the index the um, nasdaq and the crude oil um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this to the daily time frame what am i seeing here okay so india wix so india wix is actually a bit of an issue right now i can see that india wix is you know very very close to the bottom um it can be expected there is also a positive divergence on india wix very evidently visible which is a sign that volatility is going to increase in the market now increasing volatility doesn't necessarily have to be a bad sign because if you look here this phase right this phase is parallel to this phase volatility increased in the market but so did the prices okay so a lot of people think that if wix is going to go up market is going to go down it's not the case all the time okay that's one thing let's also take a look at the 15 minute just to be sure all right let's uh, also take a look at okay see crude oil has declined quite a bit and usually declining crude oil is a good news for the market because there is said to be what we call a inverse correlation between crude and nifty um so this declining trend is a good news but some short term bullishness is very evidently to be expected in the crude oil prices now let's take a look at nifty uh, india wix again and what are we seeing i'm going to delete this line that i just drew on the daily chart um okay the 15 minute time frame is not really telling me anything so i'm just going to move on to the indices see if you are a swing trader or a momentum trader and you want to make money in the market even if you don't trade in things like crude oil or commodities you have to keep a side eye on them because they impact the market yeah all right now what we can see here is that since the opening on monday the reality sector has just gone boom okay reality sector is giving a massive movement so let's do one thing let's open up cnx reality right here and check it out it's very strong rally in reality sector especially over the past 5 days that is this entire week very strong reversal uh if i look at this comparative chart none of my reality stocks have really come up on the tracker it's mostly lalpat labs okay never mind about that coming back to this so reality sector has clearly been the biggest winner of this week with the 10% upside next has been the psu bank now a lot of people are coming and asking whether they should start buying reality sector now psu bank now and this is what i'm going to this is what i told them and this is what i will tell you also there is no reward for buying a stock which has rallied you only make money when you buy stocks before the rally so see reality sector there is still some good opportunities left though i don't prefer to touch reality sector especially in the kind of market that we are seeing right now coming to the psu bank sector the issue there is that i have been talking about psu banks for quite a while now uh, there are times when i also give stock recommendations there but remember that we want to always participate in stocks where there is a significant amount of rally left not done psu banks i believe they've already given a lot of rally there are multiple signs of exhaustion in the overall sector and even if you go down on specific charts look at sbin it's very evident that some weakness is prevailing and clear signs of momentum exhaustion are visible 
so it is not a very good idea to increase exposure to PSU bank banks in this current market or even for the next few weeks. Healthcare consumer durable and FMCG. I think great opportunities are available in all three of these sectors. IT sector is far from you know a, a big rally. I mean, if you want to make investments for the long term, like next four or five years, the IT sector is a great sector to pursue. And instead of going for individual stocks, you can also go for ITBs, that is Nippon India's the the ITBs uh ETF, you can simply do a long term SIP there. It's a great idea. Other than that, CNX Metal, so CNX Energy also has a lot of opportunity. I think it is giving a bit of a drawn out kind of reversal pattern right now. There is also some opportunity in capital goods sector. Uh, finance, I am not very bullish on. For some reason, the charts are not giving me much confidence. So I will not recommend you to. Uh, pursue the finance sector very aggressively um, the auto sector you have to be very careful I was studying the charts of Maruti and Mahindra and Mahindra and um, something is not right in the charts again there are signs of momentum exhaustion and it looks like they can go into some drawn out correction sometime soon okay so with this um, I have come to an end of the session that I had planned for you now before I leave you I would love to answer some of your questions so if you have any stock queries please mention the name of the stock and mention the stock price so that I can look at the charts and help you out with my analysis if you have positions where you're experiencing a big loss or you're in need of liquidity and would like to exit something mention the stock name and the price and I will do the analysis on screen and tell you what you should do basically give you the stop loss and the target and the actionable advice associated with that so let's move on to the comments and see if we have any inputs all right so um we have Kunal. He says he's holding Divyani at 186. What is my view? So let's look at Divyani for Kunal. All right. So what do we have here? 186. So you basically just bought it. 15 minute time frame is looking a little okay so what i am seeing is the 15 minute and the 75 minute time frame are giving pretty good news also the uh, stock of divyani is basically in a uh, primary bull trend i would say uh, now what is happening is that it has given a big correction here it's also breached the 200 ema but I think it's a good idea for you to make a fresh position and continue to hold your existing position. The only thing is you need to obviously maintain your stop loss. So I think this was a pretty good zone where the stock has kind of, it looks like it has bottomed out, right? So right beneath this, the previous low that is this one, this looks like a very good level to maintain stop loss. We'll go a little bit lower because there is this 500 EMA of the daily time frame which we are going to respect. So please maintain a stop loss at the level of 171 and Divyani is not a stock that you purchase for short term. You should only purchase it for, you know, if you are willing to hold it for an extended period of time. And I think this stock can easily, uh, you know, rally to uh, the level of 255 in the next few months at least. Okay, so if you can hold it for that long, then Divyani is a good stock for you to keep holding. So that was for you, Kunal. Sajanji, thank you so much for joining again. Your query is on Polycap. It helps to analysis better if you also mention your entry prices, people. So please mention the entry price as well. Um, so the chart of Polycap to me does not look encouraging at all. If you are planning to make a fresh position here, I will advise you against it. If you have an existing position, technically your stop loss should have already been triggered. 
but if you bought it very recently then i think you should exit it right away but for some reason if you're feeling very positive then 4860 should be your trailing stop loss but it does not look attractive to continue to hold all right one small reminder from the et moderator that if you are finding these sessions this particular session valuable there is a small like button downstairs please scroll down a little bit and hit that like button it really acts as an indicator of whether the value delivered was received or not or whether you know strategy needs to be changed all right uh, mr rahul is asking about godrej something godrej where did it go i lost it um okay i completely lost it let me see if i can see this better Godrej properties there i was expecting some realty sector ask okay fantastic rally in godrej properties and amazing volume but the train is a little bit on the missed side so fresh entry is not recommended for sure if you want to make an entry i would suggest you wait for the stock um where should you wait for the stock uh this is this looks like something that will take a little bit more analysis so i don't think that the stock is done correcting i think the stock will come back down to retest the level of 1640 or 1620 ish that might be a better area for you to enter if you are if you bought the stock already and if you can hold it for a while longer because see again godrej property is not a short term trading stock um it's a great stock for relatively longer term you should maintain a stop loss of 550 but say you bought the stock for a very short term then you can uh maintain stop loss at the level of 1738 but a fresh entry is not recommended right now all right so nifty view i have already shared i am not very bullish same goes for bank nifty i am not very bullish just my view i don't really know what the market is going to do we have rajat he is asking for well spun india again well spun india is again one of those stocks which is experiencing a lot of high demand from a lot of different sectors but i also think that high spun india is very expensive because uh, even though the you know the volume was um increasing when the price rallied and then the volume stagnated when the price stagnated yet i think you should wait for the price to decline a little bit more before you make a fresh entry or if you want to say make a fresh entry now because it has technically declined around 6 to 7% right make a fresh entry now but then please be sure to use a stop loss at the level of 137 for me unfortunately it won't be possible to give you a target i can only say that it looks very likely that the stock will go back and reach as the previous high of 178 All right, we have uh, Namshika ji. She is asking for reliance. I I find it amazing that every session there is at least one person who asks about reliance very consistently. That that's amazing. So, like I said in the previous session, also reliance looks good for purchasing for making fresh positions. Um, you should aim to create your uh, positions in the range of around. uh 2360 to about 2268 so i have this trade together program and in that what i do is when i identify stocks which have good opportunities right um i tell my members the name of the stock in the trade setup when it is good time to buy it and sometimes when the market is you know a little bit uh dodgy like it is right now i tell them to start using bracket orders or gtt orders to place buying orders within a certain buying range so that buying range is what i'm telling you now um within uh, like upar mein 2340 tak aapko khareedna hai and uh, i think niche mein 2223 is where it might be able to go the previous low will be your stop loss level 2213 rakh ke aap you can buy reliance for a target of 2683 okay 
Now, even though Reliance looks attractive, it is not one of the stocks which I would give to my members because it's like a it's a mega cap stock. So it moves really, really slowly. I prefer to, you know, do swing trading in stocks with a little bit more price action, more price range. Okay. All right. Um, I am sorry. Uh, somebody is asking for FNO. I don't. Um, I don't entertain FNO queries because I don't um do FNO trading myself, and I also don't recommend members to do any kind of FNO trading. Okay. So with that, we've um come to an end of this session. Now I can see that there are lots of stock queries which have not been answered. So what I will ask you to do is please join my Telegram channel and on the Telegram channel, you'll see all these posts on any of the posts. Just leave a comment, put down your question, uh, like put down your stock name, put down your level. And as in when I get time, I will respond to you yesterday also or rather on Wednesday after the session, somebody had left comments in the chat group and I made sure that I responded to them with my uh, analysis. So if your questions have also gone unanswered, I'm sorry because I have another commitment for which I need to take off. I will find time to answer to your queries if you post them in the chat group. Until then, thank you so much for joining in. Um, I will see you again on Monday with a retail trader special series where I will bring to you one topic of knowledge which will help you become a better trader, strengthen your mindset and improve your own trading system. So if you're interested in learning from me, be sure to join the Monday session sharp at 4.30 p.m. Same place. Thank you so much for joining today's session. Namaste.